Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we're looking at this late 1960s Zenith. I don't know the model yet. It's the X13, the 13X15 chassis. It's a little 13 inch black and white all tube portable. You don't see many of these around and this is one of the sets that's kind of been on my bucket list. So to see it at an estate sale for relatively cheap was really cool. But I know nothing about it. Uh, there was no power at the house, so I couldn't plug it in and test it. So, what we're going to do is crack it open, take a good look at it, do some brief checks on things, and uh, see if we can fire it up and see what it does. You can see that one of the UHF terminals got broken here, but that's okay. The internal antenna obviously is busted, but again, not really important. The, uh, yeah, that's not going to work out too well, is it? So, good thing I don't need that. <laughs> Very basic Zenith controls here. We've got your linearity, your size, the famous buzz control, AGC, horizontal hold. Let's crack it open. And with this mounted, this should give me access to the screws. These little portables have been coming out of the woodwork lately, and I'm loving it because they're much easier to collect than the giant console things. I have enough giant consoles. Come on out. Well, the Magnavox I just did really isn't on my keeper list, but the Zeniths are. I do like old Zeniths. see here doesn't look like those two screws there hold the cover on but I could be wrong obviously the way to find out is to just pull it off this one's gonna fight me making sure that antenna doesn't have anything to do with it It's adorable. Look at that cute little tube chassis. All right. All of Zenith's famous point to point wiring. And this has the famous linearity sleeve. Uh, one thing I note, first of all, is the glue here that's corroding the windings. That's not good. Those are so fine that I'm very, very leery of trying to get rid of that. Something has to be done. That's just not good. Hopefully the yoke is not open. And we got our filter capacitors here. Because obviously you're not going to shove them under the chassis. Uh, it uses a 12C BP4. So it's a 12 inch, not a 13. And famous point-to-point -point wiring. See a bumblebee there that needs to go. Some uh, film caps here. Typically these don't go bad, although I am seeing some in RCAs that are failing. There's a, two orange drops here that somebody's replaced, so the set has been repaired. And I'm not sure what this... Uh, switch thing here is maybe that's the on and off i don't know i didn't look to see what these look like it's the first time i've ever encountered one in person compactrons though lots of compactrons this is an rca tube that's been replaced the rest of them appear to be zeniths and there's your tuner there with your rf amp and your mixer oscillator this has been replaced because ain't no way soldering a job like that and this loose ass wire would have gotten past QC at the Chicago plant. No way. 
No way. Yeah, we all know that guy. That's some pretty cool videos. So I guess this is the on and off. Has to be. Because this is brightness, contrast, vertical, and there's obviously nothing there. So maybe that's just how it is. That's so weird. Never seen that kind of setup before. But again, first time I've owned this. All right, let's open the high voltage cage just out of curiosity and see what they use here. It looks like that's the only screw that holds the cage on. And we have to remove the horizontal output. And this is probably going to be a 38 HE7 or 33GY7. There's no transformer. This is a series string. And there we go. I don't know if you can see that there. 38 HE7. Replacement high voltage rectifier tube too. Let's fly back. Looks like it's seen some time. Definitely some hours on this one. Looks like a 1B3 or 1K3 high voltage rectifier. Well, I guess the first thing we'll do is get out the ESR meter and see if any of the filters are bad. And touch up the soldering on that one, which looks something awful. The wire's just kind of loosely wrapped around the terminal with minimal soldering. Let's, let's take care of that. Let's make this a little bit of a tighter mechanical connection. And then we'll solder that loose wire there. That's just, yeah, this had to have been replaced. Like I said, that would have never passed QC, ever. And it's only that, that positive terminal there, or that one terminal, like that one's okay. And the soldering on this ground lug is not very good. That's better. Nothing like bad ground connections. I don't know if you all watched a video recently, Shango posted about a CTC-25 with terrible grounds that caused all sorts of issues, but that's... Alright, so that's taken care of. Let me go grab the ESR meter real quick. Alright. I'm sure this will score nicely. Yep. That section's good. This one's a little tired, but we don't know what that is yet. Let's take a look on that. Oh, that's a four microfarad. So that section's a four microfarad. Yeah, that's about right. Four microfarad at 450 volt. That's about what it would register. So those are probably fine. Uh, that doesn't tell us it's not shorted, though. So the next thing to do would be to grab our meter and see if there's an obvious short or if the capacitors charge up, in which case uh, we can probably dim bulb this thing and it'll be good. So if we go to the first section here, yeah, it just nicely charges up. That's like four megs there, so that's good. Uh-huh. All right, so 
Love it when that happens. A little stand for the meter popped out of its socket. Okay. So just for grins and giggles, what I'm going to do to save a little bit of time is we're just going to clean the pots right now with some fader lube. And just work them a bit. That fuse is intact there, so that's good. So I'm just spraying it in the opening when the leads come out. And then we're just turning the, the controls here like this, just so you can see what I'm doing. And then likewise the volume control down here too. Okay, uh, as a precaution, since this uh, looks as though it decouples high voltage right to the chassis, and they have a tendency to leak and explode, I'm going to replace that bumblebee cap there. And that looks, it's brown, black, orange. So that should be a 0 0.01 in the blue stripe. That's 600 volts. So let's get a, a 0.01 in there. All right. Let's get this at a better angle here if we can. There we go. Shine some light on things. This is the dude that we're going to replace here. Hold still. And I'm just going to cut him out. Nope, I don't want to be pulled out from that way. Yeah, this is decoupling high voltage uh, from the plate of, I believe this is the video amp tube, so I want to make certain that it's not going to cause an issue if it leaks or explodes. And off camera, what I'm doing right now, because you can't see, is I'm checking the old value of the capacitor to see if my brain's functioning and me reading the color codes And so right now, it's 15.5 nanofarads. So that's 0 0.015 microfarads. So yeah, that's gone up in value. All right, so at least I have the right value. Uh, and what we're going to do with this guy here, let's back this up just a little bit. Let's see how we're going to approach this. Yeah, probably just make some eyelets. And let me trim the, you got to remember to trim the leads off so that it's close to the old length of the capacitor, including the little eyelets you're going to have to make. So we're going to take some tiny little needle nose and make eyelets here, kind of like that. Same for the other side. And we'll put this guy up in here. 
bend this over a little bit. This way it makes for a good mechanical connection. And we'll solder it up and then we'll cut off the excess. And we'll stick this thing on the dip and bulb tester and see if it'll come up. It's a zenith, it probably will. About the only common faults I see with zeniths are in the voltage doubler. The voltage doubler can shorts and that's not a big deal. Let me cut off the excess here. I have this huge paranoia of bumblebees because I've had too many instances where they've exploded on my bench. And it's like no warning. It's like ultra ultimate violence. No warning. Bang. And it leaves a whole big mess. Okay. Let's apply power to this thing. Yeah, and Tim bulb it and see what happens. Before I do that, I almost forgot to clean the tuner. I'm just going to spray some CRC on some of the visible wafers here. And we'll just rotate it. Okie dokie. Next thing we'll do, get ourselves a cheater cord. And we're just going to plug right into the back here. Get our dim bulb tester. Now, I'm going to take one of the tubes out of the circuit so that we're not eating up all of our current on the filaments. And just see, watch the dim bulb as the uh, power supply charges. It's a 90 watt bulb. And if that looks happy, then we'll stick the tube back in. In fact, I can probably just unplug the CRT here and that'd be good enough. And here we go. Three, two, one, fire. Got a little bit of action and then it went dark. So that's good. It's like no current draw. It's all the filaments. Watch what happens when I put the CRT back on. Look at all that draw for the filaments. That's going to go down a little bit. As it warms up. All right, so that looks good. It's starting to get brighter. I doubt that the horizontal is going to be able to start, so we're going to bypass the ball, but it's probably okay. The fact that we had almost no current draw and uh, everything seems to work good. Go ahead and just turn it on, see what happens. This is always the fun part. Set everything to about midpoint. I can hear the vertical. There we go. Ugh, that CRT looks tired. That's as bright as it gets. No contrast either. Well, that sucks. Time to get out the Beltron. 
All right, so let's see if I even have an attachment for this tube because it's kind of weird. I think this is the rig that I'm looking for. Yeah, it looks like it's going to fit. Cool. And let's see here. Right, apply power to the Beltron, and let's adjust our filament voltage here. Let's see what kind of horrible emissions we have, if at all. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, she tired. Long journey on this one. This one's tired. Let's see if we can do a cleanup to improve that. Or if somebody's already been down that road, I'm betting they have because no flashy flashy. Oh, there we go. it up some. Let's go down to four volts about and see how happy it gets after that. Huh. All right. Not budging at four volts. Let's go down to three volts. Really? Cool. Let's go down to two volts. She's got to be starting to get tired now. There we go, starting to fall off at two volts. Bring her back up to three. Good emission at three volts. See, folks, get a Beltron. They're magic. Now, this isn't always going to work. And there are some tubes that just don't restore. But this one woke right up. So let's see uh, what the picture looks like now. Okay, let's see what she does now. Now that we got a CRT with some better emissions. So hums the isolation transformer and just does that. Ooh. What a difference. Gotta turn that almost all the way down. Looky looky. Let's switch outlets here. There we go. See, it just hums depending on what outlet tap I'm using. Okay. This is good. Let me get an adapter on this, and we'll see if we can get some terrestrial TV. My adapter's about to break. But maybe I can get another use out of it. Got to be locked on something to get a frequency change. Looky, looky. Let's see here. Contrast ratio really good. Ooh, I got lucky with that one. I don't think I'm going to need to do much to this. This just works. Too much 
Because we can't just take up where we left off. Very cool. All right. I don't want to be on this for too long, otherwise the content ID might. Let's see. We got a little bit of Twitchy McTwitcher set up here. Definitely some overloading. That's why the thing is so bright. So let's turn down our AGC a little bit. that see there's overloaded and then there's not overloaded all right that's a little bit better right, let's change our brightness level up our contrast a little bit It's stretched because I've got it on 4x3 versus uh, its correct format like there. Alright, still got plenty of contrast range. Man, that's looking good. We're just letting it run right now. I am worried about the occasional squishy switch up here. We've got a lot more channels out of Mexico now than we used to. Let's see. We can... Nice looking picture. We got a little bit of distortion in the audio, but that's probably from the detector. We can see if touching up the buzz control is going to help us a little bit. Let's use a slotted. And let's go to a menu screen. Wrong button. Kind of our best compromise there. Got a little bit of overscan, but the line voltage here is a little high too. It's about 124 volts. Really should be about 115 for this set, 117. Cool, man. Last time this set was service, I guess they did the geometry and stuff because it's uh, pretty good looking. Yeah, what a difference. Woke that CRT right up. We do need to move the uh, picture over a little bit. We can find the other magnets down here, I guess. Trying to center it up. That's better. We do know there were two officers who returned fire on the suspect. One from the Oceanside Police Department. The other was a Maybe. County deputy. 
raise this up just a little bit. One's usually up and down, and one's usually side to side. Yeah, it just is what it is. It's not one to go up too much more. Let's uh, put the pattern generator on it real quick and see what my geometry really looks like. Maybe there's, I think there's a little tiny bit of compression up top. Not much. Yeah, this is going to get messy because I'm broadcasting on the same channel. This is where my adapter decides to leave the chat. No, geometry looks pretty good. A little bit of loss of signal here. That AGC control is a little touchy, but not bad. So I think this thing's happy, man. No bueno. They got the first hand experience. That uh, sucks to be them. Okay, well, this thing's looking good. Amazing the difference uh, giving it a little love tap with a Beltron made. I think that the vertical is a little bit stretched. Just a little bit. We're going to back off on that some. Let's see if I can readjust it a little bit. But that's got a really nice picture on it. Somebody just played it to death. Just played it until the CRT was exhausted and then they shoved it in a closet. So... This is cool. Hopefully the rejuve will last. Usually they do with Zenith tubes. So this is a, a really easy fix. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed this little snippet and uh, more stuff to come.